for production of the Mikado, or the town of Tidihu, in the historic Agassiz Theater. Um, as I mentioned in my program notes, standing in historic spaces can be a complicated endeavor, as it is with this show, which has been challenging to the identities of many Asian American students on campus, including myself. The existence of the show necessitates our engagement with both its problematic history and its geopolitical context. Of course, this is an extraordinarily difficult and complex task. Remember history is to remember empires built on tea, spices, silk, and opium in exchange for human lives. It is to remember the complicated trajectory of world history and what it means to us today. Though many of these events happened after Gilbert's lifetime, it is still important to remember them in order to contextualize this show in our own time. To make sense of the pain and brutality of our forebears is no easy task, but it is important to remember to be kinder to each other to begin the process of healing. As an Asian American woman, I stand before you as an, in, in, a, in an attempt to reinsert myself into the history of this show's production, to change its narrative, and to take ownership over its continued production. I feel a kind of vulnerability standing here and opening myself and the production up to audience scrutiny after pouring so much of myself into it. And I ask all of you to remember that the cast, staff, and orchestra of the show may also feel the same. But there is also a certain kind of vulnerability and even bravery for those of you who are new to GNS and new to our organization to come into this theater today to give us a chance, though the show may have high stakes for you. We hope that all of you may have the chance to have your voices heard, so we invite you to make use of the note cards in the second floor hallway as a place to share your thoughts and stories. Finally, while the speech has been quite serious, I want to remind you that the source material is a satire that render, renders its own characters ridiculous. Our restaging of the show recontextualizes this satire to render the original show's appropriation of Japanese culture ridiculous rather than the Japanese-ness itself, all the while preserving the quirks and misadventures central to the GNS canon. Whether this is your first GNS show or your 20th, we invite you to laugh along at Gilbert's topsy-turvy humor. Now please rise for God Save the Queen. Thank you. <laughs>
take the cap around for contributions while discharging this delicate office. I saw Joanne. Ah, you mean Yum Yum. Oh, right. I saw Yum Yum. Oh, we loved each other at once. But she was engaged to her manager, Coco. A cheap laundry man. <laughs> and I, oh, a cheap launderer. And I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight. When a month ago I heard that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. Oh, I hurry back and hope to find your young and listen to my protestations. <laughs> it is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting. But she was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of General Mac I mean, Lord High Executioner of this very hotel under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs>
because they were too proud to work under an ex launderer did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them? You did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord Accountant, Lord Chief of Security, Commander in Chef, High Lord Admin, Master of the House, Broom of the Backstairs, Hotel Chaplain, and President of the Hoover Dam Fan Club, Las Vegas Division, both acting and elect, all rolled into one. And that's a salary. A poobah paid for his services. I, a salaried minion. But I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. <laughs> oh, and it does your oh, but I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I boogie at cheap suburban dance parties. I accept refreshments at any hands, however lowly. I also retail mob secrets at a very low figure. For instance, any further information about Yum Yum would come under the head of a mob secret. <coughs> money. Give me money and I'll oh. tell you more about oh. Yum Yum. <laughs> Another insult, but I think it's a light one. <laughs> Thank you. 
chances liberated then on bail by my own recognizances wafted by a favoring gale and as one sometimes is in trances to a height that few can scale saved by long and weary dances surely never had a meal under such like circumstances so adventurous a tale which may rank with most romances taken from the county which it will ever be my study to deserve. If I am ever called upon to act professionally, I am happy to think that there are plenty of people whose loss will be a distinct gain <coughs> to society at large. <laughs> And someday it may happen that a victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society defenders who might fail the underground and who never would be missed. They never would be missed. There's the pestilential nuisances who write for autographs, or people who have flabby heads with irritating laughs, <laughs> the children who are up in days and loyal with them flat, or persons who in shaking hands shake hands with you like that. And all the persons who on spoiling take out case insist that none of them be true, that none of them be missed. He's got him on the list, he's got him on the list, and none of them be missed, and none of them be missed. And that mezzo serenader and her romance with the bass, the piano organist, I've got them on the list. Or people who eat peppermint and puff in your face. They never would be missed. They never would be missed. And we give you the praises with enthusiastic tone. All centuries but this and every country but his own. And this lady from the provinces who raises like a guy. Who doesn't think she dances, but would rather like to try. And that singular anomaly, the small hand populist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd be missed. I'm sure he'd not be missed. <laughs> All funny fellows, comic men, and clouds of private life. They never would be missed. They never would be missed. And apologetic statesmen of a compromising kind. Such as, what you call him? Is he important? And likewise, never mind. And sister, and what's his name? And also, you know who? The task of filling up the blanks had rather leave to you. But it really doesn't matter whom you put upon the list. Oh, they never would be missed. They never would be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. For the number would be missed. They are not. I 
approaching marriage must last a week. I should like to do it handsomely, and I wish to consult you as to the amount I should spend upon them. Mm, certainly, in which of my capacities as First Lord Accountant, Lord Chief of Security, Attorney General, Chancellor of Demonet, Privy Purse, Private Secretary... It's supposed to say as Private Secretary. Oh, well, as your Private Secretary, seeing as the city should have to pay for it, don't stint yourself. Do it well. <laughs> As the city shall have to pay for it, that is your advice. As private secretary, of course, as Chancellor of de Monet, I am bound to see that due economy is served. <laughs> but just now you said, don't stint yourself to which will. As private secretary. And now you say that due economy must be served. <laughs> as Chancellor of de Monet. Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> My secretary, how do you recommend I deal with this situation? Oh, well, as your secretary, I should have no hesitation in saying, Chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think, look, if it were not that as Lord Chief of Security, I am bound to see that the law is not violated. <laughs> Come over here where the Chief of Security cannot hear us. Now, as First Lord Accountant... Oh, of course. As First Lord Accountant, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. If it were not that as President of the Hoover Dam Fan Club, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. Or, as Paymaster General, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. But then, as Hotel Chaplain, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself to my own hands as the Lord Chief of Security. That's extremely awkward. <laughs> That's not to say that all these dignified people couldn't be square, but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless they were insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter shall have my careful consideration. But my bride and her two sisters approach, and any little compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in the characteristic Nevada attitude, would be a steam of favor. <laughs>
how delicate it is, don't we? I should think we did. How a nobleman of your importance can do it all is something I never shall, never can understand. <laughs>
Pedro was beheaded. But now I find that you're to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. Oh, but you do not love him. Alas, no. God, I'd rapture. But why do you not refuse him? What good would it do? He is my boss, and he wouldn't let me marry you. Oh, but I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Las Vegas, girls do not arrive at the age of discretion until they are 50. <laughs> True. From 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. <laughs> and besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside of strip clubs is hardly the fitting husband for the ward of the Lord High Executioner. Uh, but... Oh. Oh, should I tell her? Oh. Huh? oh. Yes. <laughs> what if it should prove? But after all, I am no musician. There! I'm certain of it! Directly I heard you play! The trombone! Are you going to the first trombone, the second one? What if it should prove that after all, I am none other than Ba Ba Ba! The son of his majesty, the Mikado. <laughs> the son of the Mikado? Then why is your highness disguised like this? And what has your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Persia. Some horrid woman that my father adores. Oh, she mistook my customary affability to expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Earl Warren of his ma, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. So that night, I fled our lake house and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, and join the band in which you found me when I first had the pleasure of seeing you. Oh, if you please, your highness had better not come too near. Laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we're quite alone, and no one can see us. Still, that doesn't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, deuce take the law! I wish it would, but it won't. Oh, if it weren't for the law, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it weren't for the law. We will be sitting side by side, like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like that. If it weren't for the law, we would be gazing into each other's eyes, like that. Raving sighs of unutterable love. I'll never do this, all this, all this, all this, this. 
This is what I'll never, never do. It's all this, all this, all this. This is what I'll never do. I'll never do. All this. which is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. Yes, you might reserve that point. It could be argued six mm. months hence before the full court. Mm. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. Well, even if you only succeeded in uh, cutting a top off, that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the corporate will. No, no, sir, pardon me, but there I am adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake, and I cannot consent to embark upon any professional project unless I can see my way through to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it puts us in a very awkward position. My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself compared with that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. Unless you can offer a substitute. A substitute. Nothing easier. Here, here, Poobah. I hereby proclaim you Lord High Substitute. Oh, I should be honored. Such an appointment would fulfill my fondest dreams. But no. At any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. <laughs> My family pride to be my guide. I volunteer to quit this sphere instead of you in a minute or two. But family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My I am 
My brain it teems with endless schemes, both good and pure. For Titi Poo, for Titi Poo, but if I finish the benefit that I do feel, the town was lost. Now every man who hates his clan should plot and plan as best he can. And so, although I'm ready to go, yet recollect to disrespect it, I neglect to thus effect this aim direct. So I object. And so, although I wish to go and greatly pine to brightly shine and take the line of a hero, find the green front line, I must decline. And go and show a best friend, and so how much you dare, I'm quite aware it's your affair. Yet I declare, I take your share, but I don't much care. I take your share, but I don't much care. I take your share, but I don't much care. So I object. In a dull dog dog, in a place in a chunk, in a line long dog, dog, awaiting the sensation of the shock, 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 from a chicken chicken chopper on a big black dog. So sit in solemn silence in a dull dog dog, in a place in a chunk, in a line long dog, dog, awaiting the sensation of the shock, 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 from a chicken chicken chopper on a big black dog. A dull dog dog, a life long dog, a shock, 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 a big black dog. To sit in solemn silence in a place in a chunk, prison and awaiting the sensation from a chicken chicken chopper on a big black dog. committing a crime, a crime which, which, <laughs> substitute. What's the matter? Is it absolutely certain that you are resolved to die? Absolutely. Will nothing whatever shake your resolution? Nothing. As threats and treaties press all useless? All. My mind's made up. Well, if you really mean what you say, and you truly are resolved to die, and nothing whatever can shake your determinations, uh, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely by the Lord High Executioner. Well, I don't see how that would benefit me. You don't? Observe. Uh, you'll have a month to leave. You'll be like a fighting cock in my expense. Uh, when the day comes, there'll be a grand public ceremonial. You'll be the main figure. No one will attempt to deprive you of that distinction. There'll be a procession. Bands, dead march, bones, tolling, all the gold crying, the army will be strapped in, and when it's all over, general rejoicing, so to display of fireworks in the evening. <laughs> you won't be able to see them, uh, but they'll be there, let's see. Do you really think that Yum Yum will be distracted at my death? I am convinced of it. Bless you, she's the most tender hearted little creature alive. Oh, I should be sorry to cause her any pain. Oh, but um, but perhaps if I left the States and traveled in Europe for a few years, no, you no, tried to forget her. No, no, I, I don't think you could forget young and quite so easily. And besides, what is more miserable than a love blighted life? Oh, true. Life without young and why? It seems absurd. And yet there are a great many people in this world who have to endure it. Poor devils, yes. You are quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. <gasps> Noble fellow, I am also. You let me marry Yum Yum, and in a month you may behead me. No, no, sir, I draw the line of Yum Yum. Oh, 
Very well then. If you can draw the line, then so can I. No! No, I cannot permit that! <clears throat> Why? How can be reasonable, sir? How can I consent to your marrying Yum Yum if I am going to marry Yum Yum myself? Well, because, noble fellow, she'll be a widow in a month. You can marry her then. <laughs> That's true, of course. I quite see that. But my position in the next month's time will be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. <laughs> Not half so unpleasant as mine at the end of it. Well, yes. I agree. Well, after all, it's, it's only postponing my wedding for a month. But you won't prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I've educated her to be my wife. She's been raised to view me as a wise and virtuous fellow. I shouldn't like her opinions on that point disturbed. Trust me, she'll never learn the truth from me.
tormented to cry all life to Nanky Poo. But as one month you have to live as fellow citizen, this toast with three times three will give long life. <laughs> long life to you.
nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. <laughs> Let's, 
thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It, it's absurd to cry. <clears throat> Quite ridiculous. <laughs>
Now, kiss her. <laughs> a kiss her, for God's sake. Oh! Oh, it's simple torture! No, no, it's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What do you mean? Oh, my poor child, my poor little child. How shall I break it to her? My poor little bride that was to have been. Was to have been? Yes. You never shall be mine. I'm what? So I've just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. <laughs> Buried alive? Buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. <laughs> but, 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 but did you get this from? From Poobar. He's my solicitor. But he may be mistaken. Uh, so I thought. So I consulted the Master of Ceremony, the Master of Health, the Chief Public Liaison, and the President of the Hoover Dam Fan Club, Las Vegas Division, both acting and elect. They're all of the same opinion. I never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. <laughs> oh, but, but stop a bit. This law has never been put into force. Not yet. You see, flirtation is the only crime punishable by decapitation, and married men never flirt. Oh, that's quite right. I almost forgot that. <laughs> but I suppose I may take it then. My dream of happiness is nearly at an end. Darling, I don't mean to appear selfish, <laughs> and I love you with all my heart. In fact, I don't suppose I shall ever love anybody else half, half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea, pet, that in a month I should be buried alive. Oh, nor did I. This is the first I've heard of it. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive is such a stuffy death. Oh, I would call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Oh, I do, but I also see my own. If I insist on you carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. But if I release you, you marry Coco at once. Here's how you do, here's my daddy do. When your time has come to perish, then the faded blue must be slaughtered too. Here's a how you do, here's a how you do. Here's a pretty mess. In a month or less, I must die without a wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Oh. Girls will stay no things. Do her like she thinks. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Mary, your it brings. Girls will stay no things. Girls will stay no things. With a passion that's intense, I worship and adore. But the laws of common sense say what is true in all. If what I say is true, tis death to marry you. Hills of pretty state of things, hills of pretty how we do. Hills of pretty state of things, a pretty state of things. Hills of how we do. For if what I say is true, I cannot, cannot marry you. This a pretty, pretty state. Here's a pretty how you do. My poor boy, I truly am very sorry for you. Thank you, old fellow. I'm sure you are. And quite helpless, you see. Oh, I quite see that. I can't conceive of anything more distressing than having one's marriage broken off at the last moment. <laughs> but don't worry, you shan't be disappointed at the wedding. You shall come to mine. Oh, well, that's awfully kind of you, but I'm afraid it's impossible. Why so? Oh, today I doubt. Well, what do you mean? Oh, I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon, I perform the happy dispatch. No, no, sir, I'm afraid I cannot permit that. And why, or not? I hang it all. You're under contract to die in a month's time at the hand of the public executioner. Why, if you kill yourself, what's to become of me? I shall have to be executed in your place. Oh, it would certainly seem so, sir. 
Yes, Rhubar, what is it? The Mikado and his posse are approaching the hotel and will be here in ten minutes. The Mikado? He's come to see if his orders have been carried out. Now look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain is a bargain, and you really mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. Rather, as a gentleman and a man of honour, you are bound to die ignominiously at the hand of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. What? Now? Oh, certainly, at once. Oh, oh, my oh. good sir, I do not go about prepared to behead a mo- gentleman in a moment's notice. I- Still, as Lord High Executioner. As Lord High Executioner, I am under contract to behead him in a month's time. I- I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I shall take lessons. I, I shall do it by degrees. I'll begin with the guinea pig and slowly work my way up the animal kingdom until I come to a second trombone. <laughs> If I hadn't thought my duties to be purely nominal, why I can't kill you? I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody. Oh, come, 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 poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge from time to time. But, but what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? Must it? Ooh, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean? Why should I kill you when signing an affidavit that you've been beheaded would suggest as well? Here are plenty of witnesses. The chief of security, the chief of staff, the master of house, the chief public liaison, and the president of the Hoover Dam Fan Club, Las Vegas Division, both acting and elect. Um, but where are they? There they are. And they'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all us operations staff are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted, as usual. <coughs> will the insult be cash down or at a date? It will be a ready money transaction. <clears throat> oh, for God's sake. Well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. Ha ha! Family pride! How do you like that, my butt? But I tell you that life without yum yum. Oh, is yum 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 yum, bother yum yum. Here, Commissioner, now. Go and fetch yum yum. Take yum yum and marry yum yum. Oh, Only go God. away and never come back again. Ah, here she is. Here, here, yum yum. You don't happen to be particularly busy, do you? Not particularly. You've got five minutes to spare. Yes. Excellent. Then go off with his eminence, the hotel chaplain, and he shall marry you to Nancy Poo at once. Oh, oh, no, 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 no time for questions. Just do as I tell you, and Nancy Poo will explain all. Oh, one moment. Not for the world. But here, the, here comes the Mikado. No doubt to see if I've obeyed his decree. And if he finds him alive, I shall have the most difficulty in explaining to him how I behave the duel. Here he comes. Who's seen that? Every kind of man obedience I expect 
I'm the leader of this gang. And I'm his daughter-in-law elect. He'll marry his son. He's only got one to his daughter-in-law elect. My morals have been declared particularly correct. But they're insignificant quite compared to his daughter-in-law elect. Ah, ah, to his daughter-in-law elect. Shiftly own my sway. Except his daughter in law elect. As tough as a bone, well, 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 is his daughter in law elect. My nature is love and lights my freedom from all defect. He's insignificant quite compared to his daughter in law elect. Bow, bow to his daughter in law elect. But he's second, I'm certainly reckoned a true philanthropist. It is my very humane endeavor to make, to some extent, each evil liver, each running river, a harmless merriment. My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fits the crime. And make each prisoner burnt, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. <laughs> oh, proceed on society, sinners who chatter and bleat and bore. Our sinful guests are meant for mystical Germans who preach from ten to four. The amateur tenor whose vulgar villainies all desire to shock. Shattering off house, exhibit his powers, the madam to swords wax worked. <laughs> the lady will lose, rush the cheek, or stain to grain of peace. Or peaches her vigors, painted with vigor, while drinking her lemon juice. The idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes. We've only suffered to ride on a buffer in congressional pains. <laughs> I am 
kind as the object of your majesty's visit. Your wishes have been attended to. <coughs> An execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, haven't you? Yes, the coroner has just handed me this certificate. I am the coroner, and this is a certificate of his death in the presence of the Lord Chamber, Lord Chief of Security, Attorney General, three-time resident holding champion, President of the Hoover Dam Fan Club, Las Vegas Division, and Room of the Second Floor. They were all present. I counted them myself. Very good. House, I wish I had been in time for the performance. A tough fellow he was, too. A, a man of gigantic strength. His, his struggles were tremendous. It really was a very remarkable scene. him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful frantic fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I grabbed him by his highlighted hair, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and gobbled, I drew my snake a sneeze.
loveliness. My right elbow has a fascination that few can resist. Allow me. Now, it is on view Tuesdays and Fridays on presentation of visiting card only. As for my circulation, some bad hombres. <laughs> and yet he fled. And is now masquerading in this hotel disguised as a second trombone. A second trombone? A second trombone? <laughs> yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of. Well, his actual name is George, but what do you call him again? Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. Yes, well, it is really rather easy. I, I, which I mean, it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad? His address? Mordor. Oh! Oh! Oh, his name, see here. They beheaded it this morning. Thank you, fool. <laughs> oh, beheaded it this morning. <laughs> You have beheaded the heir to my throne. I beg to offer your majesty an unqualified apology. No, I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. You really had the least notion no, of- Of course that. you had it! How could you? Come, come, my poor fellow. Don't distress yourself. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as second trombone, he must take it. <laughs> it really distresses me to take, see you take on so. I have no doubt he thoroughly deserved all he got. <laughs> we are much obliged to your majesty. Very much obliged. Much obliged. Much obliged. Much obliged. <laughs> Not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? No, we had no way to tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. It might have been written on his pocket handkerchief, but Americans don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> so true. <laughs> For compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? Punishment? Yes. <laughs> Something lingering with boiling oil in it, oh. I fancy. <laughs> Something of that sort. <laughs> uh, boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I think boiling oil has something to do with it. <laughs> I, know, I know it's only humorous. <laughs> <laughs> something with boiling oil or melted lead, something painful, I'm sure of it. Ah, oh, come, come, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. If your majesty would be beg your assurance, we, we had no idea. I knew nothing of it. I wasn't there. And that's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the fool of an axe that is compassing the death of the heir apparent is not a word about a mistake. No. no. Not knowing. No. Having no notions. No. Not being there. No. You Yes! What spirit is it? <laughs> ah, that's a slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. He's out of then. No? It'll be alright. I'll have a change. Oh. Next session. <laughs> no, it's not much execution. We'll have to launch the suit you can wait until then. Dinner would work even better. <laughs> Perfect. Then we'll see you after lunch. <laughs> I don't want any love. Shut up. <laughs> I am really very sorry for you all. But it is an unjust world, and virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs>
But condemned to die is he, wretched, meritorious be. No, it's all right, I've got it. Well, a pretty mess you've gotten us into, what with your nodding head and the difference due to a man of pedigree. Merely corroborative detail, intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bald and unconvincing narrative. Corroborative detail, indeed. Corroborative verisimilitude. And you're just as bad as he is, what with your whistling an air and just catching your eye. Whew. But that's just like you, isn't it? You always have to stick your oar in. What about you and your big right arm? Yes, and your sneakers. Well, well, never mind that now. There's only one thing that can be done. Nanky Pooh hasn't started yet. He must come back to life again at once. Ah, he has risen. Here, here, Nanky Pooh. Good news. You're reprieved. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's impossible. I'm a dead man, and I'm off on my honeymoon. Nonsense. The most terrible thing has just happened. It seems you are the son of the Mikado. Yes, but, um, that happened some time ago. <laughs> is this a time for airy pulse of large? Your father is here and with... Katisha. My father and with... Katisha. <laughs> oh, gotta go. Not to be sick. Your father is here and he wants you particularly. So does she. Oh, but he's married now. Yes, but bless me, what's that got to do with it? Because... She claims me in marriage, but I can't marry her because I'm already wed to Yum Yum. Consequently, she will order my execution, and if I'm beheaded, my wife will be buried alive. You see our difficulty. <laughs> I do. I don't know what is to be done. <laughs> oh, well, I can think of one chance. If you could convince Katisha to marry you, she'd have no claim left over me. And subsequently, I should come back to life without fear of being put to death. I never eat. Get a shot. <laughs> I really think it's the only course. Yes, but my good girl, have you seen her? She's something appalling. Ah, uh, but that is only her face. I heard she has a left elbow that people come miles to see. I am told her right heel is much admired by connoisseurs. My good sir, I decline to pin my feature on any lady's right heel. Well, it comes down to this. As long as Kaddish is single, I prefer to be a disembodied spirit. But when she is wed, oh, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. <laughs> The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra -la, bring promise of magic sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra -la, we welcome the hope that they bring, tra -la, for the summer of roses and wine, for the summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom. Spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, the flowers that bloom in the spring, tra la 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 I got to get under my wing, tra -la, a most unattractive old thing, tra -la, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say or I sing, all of the flowers that bloom in the spring. Oh, bother the flowers of spring!
whose hands still reek with the blood of my betrothed, dare to express words of passion to me, the woman that you have so foully wronged. <laughs> I do accept my love, for I perish on the spot. Go to. Who knows better than I that no one has ever died of a broken heart? <laughs> On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow tit, willow tit, willow. And I said to him, dear cabled, why do you sit singing willow tit, willow tit, willow? Is it weakness of the internet? What he might cry for a lot of worm in your little inside? With the shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, did willow, did willow. And he slapped at his chest as he sat on. was something extraordinary. Poor little chap. And if I do the same and refuse you, you'll go off and do the same and- At once. No, no, you can't, you mustn't. No, I won't allow it. No, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm a silly little goose, aren't I? <laughs> you are. And, if it should prove that I'm just a dynamite, just teeny weeny, oh, just a wee bit bloodthirsty. <laughs> you won't mind, will you? Bloodthirsty. <laughs> oh, Katisha, is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? My father. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> there is beauty in the bellow of the blast. There is grandeur in the growling of the gale. There's an eloquent of morning when the lion is roaring and the lion is attached to its tail. Yes, I like to see a tiger from the Congo more than I do. 
hates me sleeping in that All hates have a splendor that is grim. And earthquakes only terrify the dots. But to him, scientific, there is nothing that's significant in the falling out of flight of thunderbolts. Yes, in spite of all my weakness, if I have a little weakness, it's a version for a flight of thunderbolts. Hey, that is so singular, in his ailment, many artists are one. Oh, they will go and will You are elderly enough. Information I am requesting on the subject interesting is a maiden, all the better when she's tough. Oh, I'll persuade you, really, it's a general opinion that she'll last a greater longer when she's tough. Oh, I'll be up to that, what do you think? Won't you wait until you're ready in the shade? There's a fascination for entertaining a woman that's related to the thing you are sufficiently decayed. Oh, I'm at that you mention. I can give it some attention, and I think. I am sufficiently decayed. For the registrar. Uh, I am the registrar. Well, my difficulty is that, as you have slain the heir, can there remain the heir apparent is not slain? Bless my heart, I swear. Your Majesty's will is law. Uh, consequently, if Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman, then a gentleman is told off to be killed. As a result, that gentleman is practically dead. Practically, he is dead. And if he's dead, why not say so? Good point. Come, come. And join our expressions of glee. Um, 
this subject I pray you be dumb. Dumb, dumb. Your notions, though many, are not worth a penny. The word for your guidance is mum. Mum, mum. There are lots of good fish in the sea. On this subject we pray you be dumb, dumb, dumb. We think you had better so come, come, come. There's no time for a penny, no way for a penny, no way for a penny. There's no time good fish in the sea. There are lots of good fish in the sea. There's no time for a penny. Thank <laughs> you.